you can jump right in with watercolor if you like with no preliminary drawing. I'm keeping this simple for speed, but this is a wind chime that hangs outside my studio. I've had it for years, and I'm just getting the basic bell shape. It's pottery, and it's very cool. It has a copper clapper that comes down below it. And I'll add a little extra burnt sienna to pop that up. And this gets a little light on the top, so I'm going to blot it there. And we'll let that dry while we work with the one that has a careful pencil drawing. You can do that if you like. I often do, particularly when it's something that I want to get right. Occasionally, a symmetrical shape like this is a bit more difficult unless you have some guidelines. And there is not a thing in the world wrong with having guidelines. Don't let anybody tell you there is. Whatever you want to do, whatever's comfortable for you. And again, we'll add the little copper clapper down here. And if you want, you can do your careful pencil drawing as a guideline. Just make it a looser one in, it, in that case and put your ink over it. A lot of people who do um, architecturals like to have some uh, pencil guidelines before they jump in with the ink. And I don't blame them a bit. The string here and our copper. Don't worry if you don't hit your lines exactly. That doesn't matter in the least. You can either erase them or you can leave them for a nice vibration. Either way is pleasing. And it, the uh, glaze is kind of loose here at the bottom. You can't see where the knot goes there, but as you can see here, it comes back out the other side. And there's just a suggestion of the edge here. Okay, we'll let those dry. Well, actually, ink being as it is, I can come right back in with the first layer of watercolor here. This is our uh, Micron Pigma, and it pretty much stays put. One of the reasons I like to take it traveling. I don't have to worry about it running or smearing or spilling. I only have to worry about the pen drying up sometimes. <laughs> Oops. And again, I missed my line there, so I can just push it back with my thumb. I'm going to add a little bit more color. There, maybe a little orange even to really punch it up. Oh, I like that. I'm going to add the light blue now to all three of these examples. And I can paint right over it, so I'm just going to go ahead and lay it in. Leave a bit of the sparkle on this. Down the side. And at the bottom where the glaze doesn't quite meet. Same on this one. And I'm not worrying too much about whether or not I exactly hit my edge. It's not a big deal. And again, on the ink twin, you can see I came back in and added some little specks because the glaze has a specky effect, which I really liked. And leaving just that little bit of shine down the side again. Going to add a bit of texture to these guys. Oops. 
a little bit more burnt sienna. They've been out in the weather for a while, so they'll look a little bit more weathered and patinaed. Patina is one of my favorite words. One of my favorite things, too. Some people refer to it these days as wabi-sabi. We'll come back in with the second blue. Oops, that's got brown in it, but that's okay. Still sticking with the cobalt because that's what the glaze actually is and I like it a lot. And same thing here. Again, remembering to leave a little bit of a shine. I may come back and lift that a little bit when it's all dry. And one more here with the ink to guide me. And now we'll come back with that good rich, oops, we'll drop some on the paper too. With that good rich blue, I'm going to uh, introduce a little ultramarine and a tiny bit of burnt sienna to gray it. Okay, now this comes up like this, and I'm just observing the little bell out there. You can paint with the corner of your flat brush if you wish. That works well. And here I have my pencil lines to guide me. Again, not worrying about hitting them exactly. It doesn't matter. Oops. <laughs> so why did I go oops? We don't know. And this one with our ink. I like to, tr to deliberately miss the line just a little bit because it gives it a, a kind of a cool vibration. So I'm definitely not worrying about nailing it precisely. If you want to be a photorealist, that is just marvelously fine, but I'm not, so. <laughs> I don't teach that way. I don't think I could. Oops, more water drippy. Okay, now I'm mixing up a nice dark for the string. And I've got an, a lovely pointed brush here that should work just fine for me. I'm going to turn this a little bit because it's easier for me to do a straight line that way. Or a straight-ish line. I want to have a little bit of control. And there's the knot. And it goes on up. Same thing over here. Oops, and forgot my knot. This one with the little string sticking out. And it comes right up into the bottom of the bell. And this one's already got its string because it's ink. Well, which one do you prefer? Give them all a try and see what works for you. Here are a couple of fun ways to use ink and watercolor. You can do a quick little sketch like this and just add, oh, let's make him brown. He's made of wood and see how he does. And just follow your lines and pay attention to where the lights and darks are a little bit. Don't feel like you have to fill in like you were in grade school. It's not that kind of a sketch. The little light struck parts can stay white if you like. And let your colors vary some for interest. 
a little blue, a little uh, burnt sienna. Sienna. It's a nice golden color that I like a lot. But even if your lines have been very loose and rough, a watercolor wash like this can help pull them together. For instance, we'll just do a very quick one of this same little guy. And I'm using uh, Micron this time because I know that it won't lift or smear. You can paint over it immediately, which is quite wonderful. And bunny back legs. He doesn't have a tail. I don't know why. This is an old wooden toy that I've had forever. But the watercolor washes will pull him together and give him a kind of charm. Again, I'm using variegated colors, which are fun. I'm going to try a different approach with this bunny. I've carefully drawn him with ink, much more carefully than the other two, and I'm going to just wet the paper all over him. You notice this is a little bit of a warm color, but I want to keep it light enough that his lines show through. This allows you to have Kind of a tight and a loose drawing at the same time, which I enjoy. The background is loose and the bunny himself is, well, not terribly tight, but realistic just the same. And we'll tilt the paper a little and let those things run together, do interesting things, spatter here and there. Change color. For more interesting spatter. It doesn't all have to be the same color. And I'm going to come back in and blot just a little bit here and there for more control. If I want a lighter edge here, I can blot that back. And I can lift my brush, or clean my brush, and lift with it just a bit. To lighten those edges. You can see this is not the colors that the bunny was himself, but kind of interesting. So, this is the kind of thing I usually end up adding a little text to, so I'm going to do that. Just for fun. And now that I've got that nice bright blue, let's add a little bit of that spatter too, so tie everything together. Alright, which one do you like best? Give them a try.